Let's play three minute game. It's another bait Norwegian with from my uh, he has the avatar from my favorite Norwegian football club Stavik, which is surely is an effort to to bait me into playing him. But in that case, well done. Hmm, e three. Yeah, we see sort of a color system for white here, which is very solid. B3, I'm going to take D4, E D4. I was kind of happy to see that because now we get, now we get a um, fixed pawn structure in which, you know, black is usually very much fine. Like, I don't think you would particularly mind playing this position with uh, colors reversed. So I would say, objectively speaking, black is probably a little bit better already. And playing CT5 provoked, un sorry, unprovoked, I would say is a bit of a positional, positional mistake. Um, since with, with those pawns on C4 and D5, if I do decide to take on if I do decide to take on, um, oh, this is a bit tricky. If I go a6, there is, uh, okay, I'm just gonna go 97, keep it simple. So what I was gonna say is if I do decide to take on c4 at some point, either white gets knight c4 um, with, with tempo, or he can go bc4 and create hanging pawns in the center. And I think both of those scenario, scenarios are better for white than just taking a d5 immediately. But I gotta say that my opponent is playing very well after he took on d5. He's gone for bishop b5, um, gone knight c4, knight e5, and he's gained uh, a bunch of activities for his pieces um, that can sort of make up for the, um, the slight weaknesses of his structure. Rookie one, this one I'm not that convinced about though. Okay, let me take on C1 first. Because I'm really attracted to Queen C1, Bishop E5 here. If Knight E5, I got Knight G2, it is a little bit suspicious maybe, um, but I think it works. Knight g2. I mean, I'm always a little bit worried about some d5 coming, some knight g4 with mate threats and so on. But I think it should have worked out for, for black. And now with the bishop on c1, um, obviously knight e5, knight g4 could not be as dangerous as the bishop would not be on the on the a1, h8 diagonal, um, aiding mate, uh, aiding a possible mate there. And this was my point that I had this little trick. Um, of taking on d1 after de and then knight d3. As far as I can see, winning an exchange and most probably the game. Uh, there's bishop h6. Oh, wait a sec. This is complicated. Bishop h6, knight e1. Okay, it's not that complicated. <laughs> I got bishop f3. So I was thinking of knight f3, then bishop f3 and he's threatening both e7 and b7 but i go bishop f3 and now if bishop e7 there's not uh, bishop d1 um remaining a piece up uh, and gf3 king f8 would also have been a piece up and although my pieces are a bit funnily placed here uh, there's nothing he can do about it and they're gonna they're gonna escape uh with um the result of me being a fairly clean piece up. I'm just gonna go knight d4. It's gonna take on b5, go b4. I suspect then knight c6 pick up, picks up the pawn on on uh, on b4. Okay, let me just go bishop b3. He has queen king d2 now. No, don't take on b4 because the king c3 attacking both pieces, but I got bishop d5 attacking g2, so I do win one of his pawns after all. h4, I'm just going to go h6, king h7, 
He's fighting extremely well, I have to say. Okay, then he resigned, but he was fighting well, keeping my king in a bit of a cage. Next, I would have gone g5, though. If fg, I go h5, then bring the king to g6, f5, pick up e5. Or if hg, I go h5, and then the h pawn just runs. And besides, of course, I'm a piece up, so... It's all, it's all fine.